Bins and Industrial Electronics. Today we are going to discuss Silicon Control Rectifier or SCR. Now a Silicon Control Rectifier is a three terminal device namely the anode, the cathode, and the gate terminal. It is used to control large current to a load. Now it's Ability to control large current to a load is only applicable when you use uh, SCR in AC circuits. If you use SCR uh, in DC circuits, most likely uh, you're going to use it as a switching device. Okay, now. SCR is a fire restore in the sense that it is a four layer device. It is composed of four layers P and PN with the terminals anode and cathode connected opposite end of the layer and the gate terminal near the cathode. Now its equivalent circuit is like a two uh, combination of two transistors. That's why you have your TR1 and TR2, transistor 1, transistor And this is also equivalent to this circuit, one PNP and one NPN transistor. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to the operating modes of an ECR. So first, we have here the forward blocking mode. Now the forward blocking mode is when uh, the anode terminal or the positive voltage is applied to the anode of the SCR with respect to the cathode and that there is no gate current applied to the gate terminal. So in this case, as you can see, uh, anode is positive, cathode is negative, gate current is uh, not used. So in this case, the junction J2, this one, this junction will be reverse biased and therefore the device will not conduct. So the ACR is in the forward blocking mode. Okay. So again, in the forward blocking mode, the ACR is not conducting. The next operating mode is the reverse blocking mode so from the word reverse the anode is more negative than the cathode similarly the gate terminal is not used therefore junctions j1 and j3 are reverse biased at the same time the ecr is not also conducting so when we say ECR is not conducting, it, it's not allowing uh, current to flow into the circuit or into, into the terminal itself. Okay, so this is the reverse blocking mode. The third mode is of course the conduction mode. So this is now when the ECR is conducting, allowing current to flow. Now there are two ways by which the ECR is in conduction mode. A, this is without gate current, the anode voltage is increased beyond a certain level called breakover voltage. So if the applied voltage across the anode and cathode terminals exceeds a certain value called the breakover voltage, even though the gate terminal is not used, the uh, ECR will conduct. Although this is not a desirable way of conducting an ECR. But nevertheless, if that uh, value, uh, voltage BO, VBO, breakover voltage, is exceeded, then the anode cathode terminals will conduct or the ECR will conduct. And second one which is uh, 
why uh, this is the uh, topic that will be discussed more on ECR is when the gate current is applied to the ECR. Okay, so when anode and cathode uh, uh, terminals are forward biased, and a certain gate current is applied to the uh, gate terminal, then the ECR will also conduct. So when the ECR is conducting, it allows current to flow from anode to cathode. Okay, the gate current will be very small compared to that term anode to cathode uh, current. Now, if you are faced, this is now the SER characteristics, which will, it is just say, will summarize what we have discussed earlier. If you are faced with a graph, it is it's just a summary of how a certain component uh, behaves. In this manner, we are looking at the uh, ECR voltage current characteristics. So, firstly, we have to uh, uh, know what are the values in the X and Y axis. So, this axis is VBO. So, this is the, oh no, this is voltage, terminal voltage, and this is the terminal current. Okay, so th this is a VBO positive, this is negative VBO. Okay, uh, IH is holding current and IG is gate current. Now as you can see, uh, here before we faced, we are, we are looking at the surge of current through the terminals, anode to cathode. If we look at this area here, let us focus first with the positive uh, voltage. This is the positive side. So if you look at this uh, graph here, this is when a certain voltage is applied through uh, the ECR. And then when there is enough gate current applied, then the, the ECR will conduct, allowing a surge of current. But at, when at this point you are not applying a gate current, it will continue to rise to a certain value, especially when you are using an AC source. The voltage rises. And let us say, for example, at this point, a certain gate current is applied. Then again, the ECR will conduct. As you can see, you will have uh, a decrease in value of uh, VEK here, the anode to cathode terminals, then a surge of current. Then as you increase the uh, the applied voltage across the terminals, at this point you apply another gate gate current, then the voltage VEK will drop and uh, there's a surge of current. Now if you reach a certain value VBO, the breakover voltage, even though you are not applying a certain gate current, still this ECR will conduct. Okay? As I've said, this is an undesirable way of triggering the ECR, but it will happen if, if uh, it will not be properly designed, uh, the gate uh, control circuit or the circuit where the ECR is being used is not properly designed. Okay. Now, uh, on the other side, since you cannot trigger the ECR, even though you apply uh, gate currents, you cannot trigger the ECR in the negative uh, voltage because the anode and cathode terminals will be reverse biased. But nevertheless, if you ap apply a reverse voltage greater than that of the breakover voltage, then the ECR will likewise conduct. So, uh, this ECR voltage current characteristics is just a summary. As you will also observe the uh, uh, voltage current characteristics of a diode, you should be able to understand by looking into the graph how an, a certain component behaves. Okay, 
So we have here the latching and holding current. So the latching current is the minimum anode current required to maintain the on condition even after removal of the gate current. So meaning, once the ACR is conducting, there is no need anymore to allow gate current or to allow current to flow at the gate terminal once the ACR is conducting. And for the ACR to continuously conduct, you have to maintain a certain amount of current, which is the latching current. So in most cases, we have a certain value of 25 milliamperes. Now, holding current is the minimum anode ca current below which the ACR will go to forward blocking state. So meaning, if you go below the holding current, the ACR will turn off. It will go to the forward blocking state. But as we know, the forward blocking state is an ACR which is not conducting. So this holding current in most cases is at 10 milliamperes. Okay? So latching current is what sometimes known as the, the locking, locking current to keep the ACR from conducting. The holding current is the minimum value by which the ACR will keep on conducting. Now let us go to SCR waveforms. So we have two famous or popular terms for SCR waveforms. So we have uh, the firing delay angle and the conduction angle. So let us define this before we go to the waveforms. The firing delay angle is the number of degrees of an AC cycle that elapses before the ACR is turned on. So this is the angle that before the ACR turns on. Okay. Conduction angle, this is when the ACR is already conducting. It is the number of degrees of an AC cycle during which the ECR is turned on already. So as you can see in this uh, waveforms, the, the uppermost waveform is our voltage source, Vs. Okay? And we have here uh, gate current pulses applied to the gate terminal of the ECR. Okay? So for example, if the pulses arrive at, at equal intervals during which the ECR is forward biased. Remember, during the positive half cycle, the ECR will be for, forward biased because anode is more positive than the cathode. During the negative cycle, the ECR will be reverse biased. So it's useless to fire or to provide firing pulses at the gate terminal during the negative half cycle because uh, the ECR will never turn on. Okay? So in this, in this uh, example, we have gate firing pulses arriving at the gate terminal during the positive half cycle. So before the ECR, before the firing pulse arrive, this is the point when the ECR is still turned off. So at this portion here, here and here, this is what we call the firing delay angle. This is the angle, which is in degrees, of course. When the ECR, rather when the uh, gate pulls arrive, the output uh, VO will also rise similar to that of the input waveform. It will follow a certain waveform. It will follow the waveform of the input okay, until it turns off again when it reaches below holding current and it will remain turned off during the remainder of the negative half cycle. Okay? So it will fire again when uh, this uh, gate firing pulses arrive. Okay? During the conduction state of the ECR, this is what we call the conduction angle. Okay? So this is VO. This is the 
a voltage across the load okay and of course current is the load current I O. so if we plot this one it will appear to be similar to that of the output voltage okay so this is what we mean by the conduction angle this is the number of degrees of an AC cycle which the ECR is turned on and the firing delay angle is a number of uh, degrees of an AC cycle that elapses before the ECR is turned on. Okay. So you have to be, uh, it's, it's very clear here that the waveforms are properly aligned. Okay. Now, uh, let us go now to our typical gate control circuit. So we have a simple uh, gate control circuit. So R1 is our load resistor. R2 and R3 are our uh, gate control resistors. Okay. So before the ECR is turned on, the a current path will be from the source through the load resistance, then through the gate. Okay. But when the ECR is already conducting, this, this is almost zero, right? It's cut off, and the current will be flowing from the source through the load and the anode to cathode terminals. Remember that when gate current flow through the R1, which is our load resistor, it's very small. So it's not enough to energize our loads. So, but when uh, the current is flowing through the anode and cathode terminal, this is a much larger current enough to energize our load okay so based on the circuit so we have here the firing voltage which is uh, the voltage when the SR fires or turns on so this is VF V RMS times the square root of 2 which is just V maximum times the sine of firing delay angle always remember that conduction angle added by the firing delay angle is equal to 180. Why? Because again, you cannot conduct or fire an ECR during the negative 180 degrees. So it, it will only conduct on the positive half cycle. So this is all in all 180. So the sum of conduction angle and firing delay angle is 180 degrees. Now gate current based on this loop here obviously is equal to IGT uh, is equal to firing voltage minus the voltage across the gate to cathode so we have here a uh, junction voltage gate to cathode uh, uh, terminal so although this is very small you can neglect this but uh, we'll just include this in our equation all over the total resistances R1, R2 plus R3 VGK is just is, uh, the range of VGK is 0.6 volt to 0.8 volt so it's just uh, very small it's it's negligible actually so if you solve for IGT and you don't include VGK that's still okay now for our load current it is already when, uh, when the uh, ECR is already conducting so we have here firing voltage minus VEK over RL. In this case, this is R1. So VEK is the anode to cathode uh, voltage. Okay. So the value of that is from 1 to 2 volts. So this is also very small. You can likewise also neglect this one. So we'll have our first example. So for the similar circuit uh, here, so we have a uh, load resistance of 40 ohms and supply is 115 volt RMS. Gate rigging current is at 15 milliamperes. Now if R2 is 3 kilo ohm, to what value must R3 be adjusted if the desired firing delay angle is 90? As you can see, R3 here is a variable resistor. So, adjusting 
the value of R3 changes also the firing delay angle of the circuit of the ECR. Okay? That's why the question here is to what value must R2, R3 be adjusted if the desired firing delay angle is 90? Now, when we say 90 degrees here, at this point, this is 90 degrees, then this is B maximum because sine of 90 is 1. That's why we have here in our solution, we have here uh, VRMS times square root of 2, which is B maximum, sine of 90, which is equal to 1. So VF is just equal to 163 volt. Now, since we're after for the value of R2, we need we need to get uh, the value of total resistance, which is equal to uh, VF over IGT, where IGT is given at 15 milliamperes, and we have 10.9 kilo ohm. So RT is 10.9 kilo ohm, but RT total resistance is the sum of R1, R2, and R3, and we are after for R3. So solving for R3, we get 7.86. Okay. Therefore, we can use a 10 kilo ohm resistor for R3, a, a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer for R3, because potentiometer is a variable resistor. And if we adjust the potentiometer to 7.9K, then we will get a firing delay angle of 19. But if you adjust certain values of uh, the potentiometer, then you will be able to uh, change the firing delay angle. Okay? So, that's all for ECR. We will be discussing uh, more about ECR in our next video.